it is almost Valentine's Day and we are going to do a fun Valentine's Day project using hearts. Allow me to introduce you to artist Jim Dine. He is a contemporary artist, meaning he is still alive today and creating art. He was born in 1935 in Cincinnati, Ohio, and is a painter, sculptor, photographer, printmaker, and poet. He is known for finding a subject that is important to him and repeating it many times over. His artwork is very personal and meaningful to him. The subject that he often repeats over and over again is hearts. Why hearts? The heart is one of Jim Dine's favorite motifs. He fell in love with the shape and has painted it millions of times. Hearts have come to represent his wife. Dine painted the heart once and liked it so much that he kept painting it. Dine's artworks are much more complex than the seemingly simple heart shape. The shape has been a way for Dine to explore how paint can be applied to a surface, texture and lines, which are elements of art, feelings and emotion. Jim Dine has painted, drawn, printed, and sculpted the heart so much for so many years that he has made the heart shape his own. Although the heart is a popular image in the common visual language, Dine has transformed it into his own personal symbol. This is one of his heart sculptures. They also have surface texture, so they feel rough to the touch. Look at all the color in this painting, which is another element of art. This painting is called Four Hearts. Dine said, the heart is a sign that one can care, that there is a constant presence of feeling. Jim Dine's painted hearts are very colorful and also use texture. Most of them have a thick black outline and some shading that adds form to the shape, making it look three-dimensional. Form is an element of art. Look at the shading on the edges of these blue hearts. Do you see how it transforms them from a flat shape to almost as if they are popping out of the page? He really explores color with his hearts. I love the yellow in this one called Cowboy Christmas. Again, we see surface texture, shading, and form. We will be creating textured hearts, just like Jim Dine. We have to first add texture to our paper. So let's find out how to do that with a quick and easy technique. All right, hey friends. Uh, Maria's back with us in the studio today. Hi. And we're gonna be making uh, Jim Dine inspired texture hearts for Valentine's Day. Okay. All right, are you guys ready? Okay. All right, so here's what we need for today. You need a piece of paper, watercolor paper, um, your brushes, uh, you need your crayons, specifically a black crayon, and then your other set of crayons. Um, and then you also need watercolor paint uh, and some water to rinse with. Okay. So this project is going to be using several of the elements of art that we have talked about. Um, the first one is going to be texture. So here's what we're going to do to add texture to our artwork. All right, so we are going to wrinkle up our paper three times. So what we're going to do is kind of fold it and crinkle it like this. I know it's like, oh my goodness, we're crumpling up the paper. <laughs> we're gonna make She's it as tight as we can. It's actually wanting us to crumble up paper. As tight as you can and then you're going to unfold it. Okay, then you're going to do it two more times.
All right, so we crumpled up our paper nice and tight three times, and then we're just gonna kind of flatten it out a little bit. This added texture to our paper. Look, it looks like you can touch it and it you can feel it. Um, so it's the way something feels is texture. So this is perfect. Now we're going to be making um, a heart. And you should remember um, how to make a heart. But in case you don't, start with a pencil so that you can erase if you need to. I'm just going to go ahead and use my crayon because I know how to make a heart. Uh, Maria's going to start with a pencil. So if you don't remember how to make a heart, you could just make two bumps like an M. We're going to make it very large on our paper. And then you're going to bring it down and connect it at the bottom. So this is one of our other elements of art, of shape. We are making lines, turning lines into shapes when you connect them. That's fine. Now go over it with your black crayon. So if you start with a pencil, just go over it with your black crayon. You want to make it pretty dark. Okay, that's awesome. We have our hearts made. Okay, so now we've used texture and we've used shape. The other thing that we're going to use is um, something called form. It's what we use to make shapes look like three-dimensional or um, like they're in our space or real. So what we're going to do is add some shading to um, the edge. So you're going to take your, cray your black crayon and you're going to press harder along the edge and then once you get inside, lighten it, lighten the pressure a little bit with your pencil. Like we did with the penguins. Remember doing the penguins? We started pressing hard near the edge, and then as you get closer into the center, you lighten up the pressure so that you're just barely lightly touching the paper at that point. So you need to lighten up the pressure so that once you get into here, you're just barely touching the paper. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bring the shading down just a little bit too down here. So I really want this side of the heart to look like there's a shadow. Okay, and then I'm also, because this is the left side of the heart, this is my left hand, this is the left side, this is also the left side of this hump, so I'm also going to do the shading on this part right here. I'm not going to continue it down on this side, I'm just going to do it just right here. Again, pressing hard near the edge and lightly as you get closer to the middle, you kind of lighten up the pressure as you get closer in. Excellent. So now you should have um, shading on the left side over here and a little bit right here on this bump as well. Okay? Um, you can darken up the edges if you want, add a few more lines if you want around it. We want that heart to be nice and dark. Jim Dine's hearts have a nice dark outline. Alright. Now, you're going to take your other crayons and you're just going to add some areas of color. So that's our um, fourth element of art. So we had texture, shape, uh, form and now color. We're just going to take our other crayons and just in the spaces that were created by the crinkles when we crinkled it up, we're just going to add some color to those. See how like this is a section that was made by the crinkle? I'm just going to add some color. Doesn't matter what color crayons you use, use all of them if you want, but just do spots of color in those sections. Good job, Maria. Yeah, pick out those sections. Sometimes there's little triangles that were made or squares that were made and you can just kind of quickly color some of those spots in with a variety of different colors. Okay, we're going to work on that and we'll speed up our video.
Okay, Maria and I are done coloring with our crayons. Go ahead and put your crayons out of the way. She accidentally started coloring with black in one of the spots because um, she picked up, she wasn't paying attention to which color she picked up. Uh, so try not to use black when we're doing this because we already used black for the heart. Uh, but just use the other colors. It's okay. It'll be fine. Totally fine. It's a happy accident, like Bob Ross says. Okay, so now we're going to take our liquid watercolors, and we are just going to add color on the whole thing. We're going to paint right over top of the crayon. Now, here's a little tip. If you want to use yellow or orange or red in your painting, then you need to start with those colors. Because when you start adding the... Um, the cool colors, then it, the, it just gets kind of muddy and brown, so you don't want that. So we're going to start with yellow, and wherever I want yellow, I'm just going to go right over top. And see all those, all those um, crinkles that we made, it just fills it in really well, and it almost makes it look like extra lines because of the wrinkles. You can decide. Um, maybe you want to do just cool cool colors outside and warm colors inside. I think I might do that. I'm going to go over this yellow with a cool color because I think I'd rather just leave my warm colors inside. But you can do it however you want to do it. Just as long as you get color on the whole thing. Make sure you rinse your brush in between colors. You haven't been doing that. <laughs> well, make sure you do that. Yeah. Okay, um, so we're done painting. Um, I'm really excited about how these turned out. Do you see how, because we crinkled up the paper and we had texture before we even started, um, there, it creates extra um, really fun and exciting things going on. Like it looks like there's extra lines, it looks like we can touch it. Um, which is super exciting. Maria's turned out really well. I decided to use the warm colors inside, cool colors outside. Um, she just did whatever she felt like doing. Um, so some warm colors inside and some cool colors as well and then cool colors outside. It's ho really however you want to do it. If you want to do cool colors inside and warm colors outside, you can do that. Um, this is your masterpiece. So uh, I think I think we're finished. What do you think, Maria? Uh -huh. You think we're finished? Yes. Um, Jim Dine would be super impressed by our textured hearts inspired by his artwork. Um, I don't think so. I think he is still alive today in creating art. So thanks, friends. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Maria, for your help. Welcome. Bye. All right. Bye.